Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306 and I've been uh, playing a little bit with this Pico projector I did a teardown of before. And one of the things that I've, I've been using it with uh, this guy here, which is my mini NES um, RetroPie system that I built. And I've been inputting uh, HDMI into the system. And one of the things, this is a great projector. The resolution isn't particularly great. But it's actually pretty good for like a Game Boy NES and like Game Boy Advance games, sort of that sort of level there. Uh, so this will be really cool as just sort of a throw in a backpack, um, maybe watch a few videos over it or something like that, uh, just for casual use. But the one thing that kills it for me is this tiny little speaker is like you can barely hear it basically. I have a fan in my um, Raspberry Pi case. And while that's running, the fan is <laughs> almost louder than the speakers, so it makes it almost useless to hear anything. So what I ended up doing was uh, doing a modification and adding a headphone jack that uh, when you insert a 3.5mm uh, jack uh, to hook up like an external speaker, uh, it'll actually disconnect this internal speaker and then pass the audio through uh, to the external speaker. And that was actually pretty easy, easy to accomplish. There are two wires on the circuit board that um, the speaker normally goes to, and they're labeled um, like speaker positive and uh, speaker negative, so it, it's pretty easy. And the wire is color-coded red and black. So I just desoldered the red one, and this jack is actually a mono jack. And um, I pulled this, it was like the headphone for, I think, a portable Casio TV uh, that I took apart a very long time ago, but I kept the jack. And it actually has a switching mechanism, mechanism. so it's basically um, mono. And um, it has three pins, one ground, one is the tip, and then the third pin is um, the switch, basically. So I took this red wire, I desoldered it from the board, and I put it into the switch pin. Um, and then finally, um, I soldered an extra black wire, soldered it to ground here, looked normal, and then the tip goes to the pot where the positive was. So what ends up happening is, if there's nothing plugged in, it actually shorts the tip to the switch pin. And so it'll just allow it to route through the jack and then back to the speaker so that the speaker can work. When you plug in a jack, it actually disconnects the, um, the switch pin and it'll only allow um, this board to be connected to the headphone jack, basically. This is pretty simple. You can look up um, schematics online to like explain this, basically. But it's a very simple way of, um, of using like a mechanical switch within the jack to switch between an internal speaker and like an external pet, uh, set of headphones or something. But anyway, um, the other modifications I had to do were, were all physical. I had to um, obviously hot glue. I was looking around where there'd be any place I can uh, put this jack because this is actually a very tight fit. And the only place that I found, I was thinking maybe through here, I'd have to drill through this like vent. There's a tiny bit of space there. But I found an even better place. It would be good to have it kind of on the back of the speaker. Um, this, I believe this is plastic. Um, this is pretty thick and resilient, kind of hard to drill through, but this would be very easy to drill through. So um, I decided to put it on the back there. So you just plug in the, the headphone jack or whatever into the back of the unit when you want to use it. If you just want to use it in speaker mode, you don't plug anything in and it uses the internal speaker. And so everything still works. Um, I can just show you a demonstration after I finish drilling and closing this off. The other physical modification I had to make um, originally this speaker bezel has a piece of plastic just like on this side but on this side I took a pair of pliers and I like fatigued the plastic to tear it off at that point uh, to make uh, room so that the jack can actually pass through to the back otherwise there would be a big piece of plastic here. Additionally there's this little ear on this side as well as this side. I took a pair of pliers and I just bent the metal carefully to fatigue it until it snapped off. And then you can see then that it'll clear, otherwise there would be a piece of metal going down here as well. So you can see that it fits together. Still pretty tight fit, not going to lie. But yeah, you can see that it will go together. And it just about clears. I think I left too much hot glue on the top, so I'm going to have to scrape that off so that this metal frame can sit flush. But you can see that the basic concept um, 
you know, minimally fits. So I'm going to finish, you know, drilling through the back here, getting everything together. And I'll show you a demonstration once this is all put together. Yeah, sometimes mods work out so much better than I thought they would. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, let me just disconnect this for a second. So I have a, uh, a speaker with a 3.5 millimeter jack. And as I know, this is mono, so only one side, uh, I don't know which one left or right, I forget which way this is wired, but only one side will actually work. But you can easily buy a mono to stereo splitter, so that's not even an issue. But you can see here, look how clean that came out. I just took a pair of scissors, trimmed this, and kind of sanded it down a little smoother. Uh, so you can see the original length on the other side. And I took a... Uh, a series of drill bits and I just slightly kept increasing in size until I got um, the jack to fit just absolute perp perfectly there. You can see there's a little bit of, um, of stray plastic and whatnot, but good enough for me. And this actually lines up almost exactly with the original screw hole. So I didn't even have to like guess where to start drilling. I just started drilling out the screw hole and it lined up exactly. So if you want to do this modification to add um, audio output to one of these little, uh, these guys go for about like $50 working. Um, I got mine for a little bit cheaper because it was sold as is. Um, but yeah, you can get these pretty cheap. They're pretty good. And uh, once you add this headphone jack output here, uh, you can actually hook this up to a uh, you know speaker. Um, headphones will even work just albeit at one channel but if you get a uh, splitter it'll work perfectly another thing to note is that metal uh, top bracket there's a little finger that goes down right where this headphone jack was uh, is rather and uh, I, I forgot to mention that I also had to trim that down because otherwise it wasn't gonna you know sit flush there one thing to note is there are now only three screws holding this guy in and a little bit of friction around this jack but you can see that there's a tiny bit of a gap here and it creaks a little bit more because there's one less screw in this corner. So this side's a little bit more creakier, but it it's something I could definitely live with. And just to give you guys a uh, sense, look how clean that came out. It looks like that that's how it should have been from the factory almost. <laughs> but yeah, it doesn't because it's like about here. It doesn't block the vents. This is absolutely perfect. I could not have uh, hoped for better. So anyway, I'll plug in a uh, video source, get something running, and um, uh, which here. Okay, so. You guys can see I am um, playing a game of Metroid Fusion, and you can hear the internal speaker. It's okay, not great, but um, hopefully I do not get copyright flagged. I'm going to make this quick just to show you guys that it works. Here's my external amplified speakers. This might be loud. Yeah, you, can, you guys can hear that uh, the difference. So this is the original, the uh, internal speaker. And this is the um, amplified uh, headphone out, basically. And yeah, everything works, you know, all too well. <laughs> I'm really surprised that uh, everything came out that well. Um, you can see everything else still works. And yeah, let's just turn this guy off and disconnect this guy. So yeah, if you guys uh, do want to get one of these, because they are pretty darn cheap. This is uh, definitely a modification that I would advise. This makes it so much more useful because you can barely hear the internal speaker, but you can plug in any 3.5 millimeter audio device now with this guy. Additionally, I had uh, 3D printed a, a mount because I gotten this um, just uh, used as is, so it didn't come with any of the accessories. Uh, luckily, it uses a standard uh, micro USB jack. I had to uh, scrounge up a uh, micro HDMI adapter, uh, this guy here, to standard HDMI so I can plug it into my sources. But I 3D printed this uh, this uh, sort of tripod mount base sort of thing. And the way it works, 
is the bottom will just accept, it threads right into the PLA, accept any standard uh, tripod mount. And there's a little clip in the back and a uh, recess area here that this slides into. And it rocks a little bit, it kind of jiggles a little bit. I left a little too much clearance, but that's better than a little bit too little. Uh, you can see though that it holds it and you can kind of position it at any angle that you want and it's fine. And this is, uh, these are printed as three parts. Uh, the tripod is a separate part that you have to super glue onto the bottom. This base is just the base. And then there's a uh, finger here that, uh, there we go. There's a finger here that uh, has sort of a puzzle shape that um, you glue into place. And just the way that it works is it kind of applies a little bit of pressure. It's slightly at an angle so that it kind of, you know, holds it a little bit firmly. If you shake this, obviously, this is just going to fly out. But this is good enough if you want to, you know, have it at slight angles, tilt it up upwards or downwards and it'll be fine. So this was just something that I uh, threw together and like this took barely any time to print. Um, I had printed all three parts at once. It took like, I don't even know, like 15, 20 minutes, something like that. Designing it took very little time because it's just geometric shapes and all. So yeah, um, these are two things that I've done to modify this. Uh, first, the audio output, which is definitely awesome. <laughs> I'm definitely going to get a lot more use from this little Pico projector now that I have um, a way of actually hearing the audio. Uh, that's one of the annoying things about HDMI because it carries audio over the cable. Um, if the device doesn't have audio out, then you're kind of stuck. Uh, luckily, the Raspberry Pi has analog audio out as well, but not all HDMI offers analog audio out. So this is at least a way of getting around. It uses the internal circuitry. Uh, that pulls the audio out, uh, and then I just modified it. So yeah, uh, hopefully you guys like this uh, this quick hack that I've done. Uh, this is actually one of the um, smoother modifications that I've uh, been able to perform. Sometimes you really have to fight with the, the device that you're making to, to make it work, but it just so happened I got lucky multiple times that there's room here, that it just was a matter of cutting some plastic and bending some metal out of the way, and it happened to line up perfectly with uh, kind of the screw hole here so I could easily uh, drill it out. And it took, you know, maybe half an hour to do all this. Anyway, uh, I've rambled on for long enough. This was just a quick video, so hopefully you guys liked it, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.